Good morning, friends, wherever you are, and welcome to today's uh, Cichlids and Coffee live stream. I'm glad you're here. Oh, yeah. So, uh, a lot to talk about today, and uh, some interesting changes in the uh, fish room. I went ahead and prepared a short video for you, just to, just to go over with you what's going on, and it's only going to get much more interesting as a new shipment arrives from the sickle check, which is going to be due any day now. Let's uh, let's take a look here at who is in the house. What do we got here? About thirty-six people on the stream, maybe. And Michael Lotonero. Hey, Michael. Glad you're here, buddy. Uh, James Green in the house. Erna. Hey, Erna. Glad you're here. Greetings from Belgium. Very, very nice. Hey, Sunder. Good to see you here. Glad you're here, my friend. All the way from India. Hey, Cat Sailor. Cat Sailor in the house. Positive Cosmic Visor. Good morning, Ben. So very sorry about the Phillies. Yeah, I'd rather not talk about it, Cat Sailor, but <laughs> it was a miracle what they did to get as far as they did. It was a miracle. But uh, hey, you know, that's sports, right? Unfortunately, there has to be a uh, a loser to have a winner. So, so at any rate, it is what it is. Uh, cat sailor filtration always a critical. Yep, it is a it's a good topic. I love talking about it. And let's see here. Hey, Denny. Denny's in the house. One of the moderators who help keep the stream moving smoothly. Cat sailor Warren Venter. Hi to you as well. Glad you're here. Peas and haps in the house, and I am just scrolling. Trenton W. Hey, Trenton W. Had snow last night. They're talking about snow here in Nashville, believe it or not. And you notice I'm wearing a sweatshirt. Good time for everybody to check on your uh, heaters. Make sure your heaters are working right. If you've been considering a controller, this would be a good time to pop one on. Get familiar with it. And... Uh, once a month, I have a, a very fast digital thermometer, and uh, once a month, I'll go around and I'll and I'll uh, do a digital check of all the tanks, uh, equipment. You know, the equipment tells you uh, that it's a certain way, and that's okay. But it's always good to um, to cross check because I've found that from time to time that the equipment is actually wrong. Uh, I have a, a cobalt heater. That's telling me that my tank is uh, 80 degrees and uh, or 82, and it's actually it's actually 70, 78. So um, you know you you got you got you got to check. Now, is it possible the digital thermometer is wrong? Mm, maybe not. But my advice is double check, double check your heaters, and uh, certainly use controllers because uh, they do malfunction. I think somebody's a Corey that says replace your heaters every couple of years or every year, uh, replace them. And uh, I think using a controller and just let them run. I mean, I've heard of folks running their heaters for years and years and years. I don't know if I would automatically replace all my heaters every, uh, I mean, if you had one tank, I guess, you know, but if you have a dozen or more tanks, uh, I, I know that Corey doesn't have a heater in every one of the tanks in the uh, in his shop and replaces them every year. That would be incredibly expensive. Hey, Jerry. Jerry Martin in the house. If you folks haven't seen Jerry Martin's 180-gallon, go, go to Jerry's fish room. Check out that 180-gallon aquarium with what has to be one of the biggest, prettiest, Malawi trouts, I think I've ever seen. Got a, several fish in there that are just incredible specimens. A testament to his fish keeping. Warren Venter in the house. He likes he likes filtration as a topic too. Hey, Cichlid Kings, good to see you, John. Glad you're here. And Mammy is here, and more folks are jumping on. Hey, Paul, glad you could make it. And Heron Navarro, good to see you, my friend. Glad you're back. Brian Park is in the house. Hey, Brian. Ozzy the Oscar. Hey, Ozzy the Oscar. My Oscars are doing um, 
incredible. You're going to see them in a special video that I have for you today. You're going to see those Oscars, especially that uh, the Red Red Tiger has just blown up. He's just gotten anyway. You'll you'll see. You'll see. So stay tuned for that special video. Is that S3 Aquatics from Houston? Now you're you're rubbing it in about those uh, Astros, and you know what? That is your right as the victor. I'll just take it like a man and. <laughs> Robert Egan in the house, and good to see you there, Robert. Glad you're here. And Joe. Hey, Joe Provenzano. Good to see you, too. Our Baglio's here. Man, we got some great people here. GP. GP, I call him a, a channel benefactor. He knows what I'm talking about. You are the best, my friend. And <clears throat> Nick D'Amico. De, de, de I use external temp controllers and only replace heaters when it stops heating. Yeah, that, that's kind of how I operate. And so the controllers, uh, well, first of all, they'll, they'll, they'll pay for themselves because you're not automatically swapping out heaters every year or two. And second, they'll pay for themselves if they save your fish from getting cooked. And uh, so, yeah, I'm an advocate of, um, of controllers. And if I fail, it's because I, it, I don't use them on all of my tanks. My smaller tanks, I don't have controllers on them. And, uh, you know, I just had a thought. I've got a small flat heater that I use in one of my, um, in in one of my hospital tanks. That's about five gallons or maybe eight gallons. And that tank gets up to like 84, 83 degrees. So that flat heater obviously is overheating. But I'm thinking I was about to throw it out or take it back to where I bought it and say this thing is overheat but if i put it on a controller and i think i've got an extra controller somewhere it'll stop it it'll turn it off when it hits uh 79 or whatever temperature i set so um i think i'll be able to save that heater doing that so all right 325 dark city kings dark city kings what a great name is that and uh, country strong and free i love i love that name you know i do and uh Hey, Salient. Salient Aquatics in the house. And let's see here. Thankfully, a GP had a heater that was melting. Oh, my goodness. Well, I'll tell you, that's what made me, uh, got me so excited. I'm sure other heaters probably have that feature, but what got me so excited about the new line of the Hyger, the heavy duty Hyger heaters that come in the, you know, like, like two tubes and one in one rectangular uh, black, uh, you know, plastic encasement, they have that auto shut off. Something starts to go wrong. Water line gets too low. Uh, something, it shuts itself off. And, uh, and then the outside controller unit that comes with the heater, which isn't what you would call a traditional controller. It's just where they put all of the, the guts. That's why they can give you a thousand watt heater that's this big, right? As opposed to like an Eheim 300, which is like this, right? So they put all the all that all that technology goes into this outside unit, and that unit uh, then flashes a, a warning that there's something wrong. So look into those high end hikers. I don't sell them; they don't pay me for saying this. They do send me stuff from time to time, but they don't pay me. They should. Nineteen. Uh, what is that? Nineteen purpose. Purpose by Design 81. Wow. Thank you for the welcome. I have 75 gallon, two cichlids right now. Bristle nose pleco. Love bristle nose pleckles. Pe plecos. They're so cool. Random dither fish. Orange tail shark. Still trying to figure it all out. Yep. Hey, let me tell you, we're all trying to figure it all out. Anyone that tells you they're not is just an arrogant. <laughs> hey, Joe. Joe Vasquez in the house. And. Hey, Heron, Heron Navarro, I had an, uh, an OACE heater go funny on me, plugged into a digital controller. Anyone seen this before? I want a single stage heater to plug into the controller. Yeah, it shouldn't. It shouldn't go wonky. It, it, the controller should be just, it basically, it's just a power source. It should be, you know, it has power or it doesn't have power. All the controller does is shut it off when it hits the target temperature and then and then give power back to it when it if it goes below. So um, 
that's odd. I would contact Oase, maybe even get a uh, get a new one. Window liquor number five. <laughs> is there is there a one through four, and is there like a six on up window liquors, or is it? <laughs> But number five, we have window liquor number five with us today. Al Turco. Hi, Al. How are you? Chris G in the house. And I forgot to, uh, country strong and free. I forgot to turn the sponge filter back on and the Cory Cat fry tank the other night. Uh, did you lose some fish or were they okay? I mean, Cory Cats are pretty, they're pretty rugged. Uh, I would imagine they might have survived it. I mean, think about it. I mean, they ship they ship fish from the from like as far away as right the the, the Middle East, the uh, Taiwan, right the, the Orient. They, they 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 ship these fish. They can take several days and they stay in these bags. I mean, you'd imagine they could survive uh, something like that. I'd hope. So um, more and more comments. I appreciate it. I have. Uh, let me get back here to something else. And I hope I didn't miss a super chat because if I did, I'm sorry. But on the topic of super chats, I have something for you today. We have a super chat game. I contacted my friends over at Sarah. I said, hey, I want to I wanna test your strips. Because, you know, I really, I, I like Sarah. I like Sarah a lot. And... Uh, Asked them for a box to test, and they sent me six boxes. Six boxes of Sarah test strips. A quick test measures six different, six different things, right? Your pH, KH, GH, or in the, uh, nitrogen, nitrite, nit nitrate. So uh, anyway, to cover shipping and everything else, uh, any super chat today in the U.S. that's over 20 bucks, I'm going to send you, I'm going to, just as a thank you, I'll send you a uh, Sarah a, a test kit. So we got a little, little bit of a game, a little bit of a game going. And I know some of you can't do a super chat that, that, that size. That's okay. But if you can, I'm going to send you a little thank you. And just so you're aware of it. All right. So let's officially start this, start this stream. If you're new to the channel, uh, please be sure to hit that sub button. We're real close to 50,000. And don't forget the thumbs up, the bell. I thank you for that. It's very appreciated. And um, I think we're maybe a couple thousand away from, from, from 50,000. So it's, it's going to be, it's going to be a, a tight race, but I'm hoping, I'm hoping we hit 50,000, share the word, uh, get the word out and it'll be a great milestone. Uh, YouTube doesn't give you a plaque for 50,000. I think they give you a plaque at a hundred thousand and uh, boy, that would be amazing. huh? But uh, yeah, 50,000 big shout outs to my wonderful moderators. Uh, you know, GP, Denny, Cichlid Kings, right. And, uh, Vibes Aquatics, and who am I missing? Jerry Martin, uh, wonderful moderators. And um, is Zen Ginger, I haven't seen Zen Ginger in a while, but Zen Ginger's a moderator, but they're the ones that help keep the stream rolling. Big shout out to them. And uh, a big shout out to the channel's uh, sponsor, The Cichlid Shack. Uh, be sure to use Shack Attack 10 when you're ordering supplies and food, including my favorite food currently, which is Extreme. And uh, also, if you order fish, over $100 in fish, use Shack Attack 15 for a 50% off discount. That applies, discounts apply to the products, not to shipping, because uh, shipping is just a wild variable these days. We don't know. I went to go ship some, uh, some stickers and some other items to somebody, $17, $17. And um, they were in the United States. Crazy. Crazy. So <clears throat> there you go. So let's get into today's topic. And today's topic is, um, 
is filtering like a pro. Now, first of all, what kind of arrogant jerk would would use a title like that? Filter like a pro. How egotistical and arrogant would you have to be? <laughs> so, <laughs> so at any rate, I'm just kind of joking with you, but but the uh, filtering it's 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 a kind of a uh, well, it it like I say, it's a it's a fluid situation, right? Everybody has things that work for them and that they're ready to assert is the way it should be done. And so probably my 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 first tip for you of the five, or I'll probably end up with more than five. I always end up giving you bonus tips, but the the, the first tip that I have for you is is stick with what's working for you. And uh, let's say you have an aquarium and you've got a uh, a couple you've got a couple hang on back filters on it, and your fish are healthy, and they're colorful and they're vibrant and and everything's working. Your water tests are coming out great, and you watch uh, some YouTube dude you know like Ben Ochart and, and and you see that he did a DIY sump system, and you're like, wow, man, I'd like to have a DIY sump. Um, I think I'm going to go do a DIY sump and I'll, I'll get my tank drilled and maybe I'll use a, an overflow box. And, uh, and you know, there's nothing wrong with growing and learning new, new things. But if it's working, if it's working, be a little bit reluctant to, to change. You know, don't, don't jump into a lot of change on a working system. And <clears throat> don't don't follow follow the trend. You know, people like to follow the trend. They like to, well, this is this is what's popular right now. This is what people are doing. And so it seems like everybody's into canisters. I'm gonna go set up a canister. And you end up not liking canisters. They're too heavy to work with. They're, you don't really understand them. You can't prime them. You can't get them to work right. They're, they, they, they're throwing out bubbles. They're making noise. And you really hate that you got into canisters. When before you had an aquarium that was running smooth as silk. And so, yes, always be learning. Always be willing to grow. But at the same time, you know, check yourself a little bit when it comes to um, changing a working operation. So that would be one of one of my one of my tips. Actually kind of a bonus tip because it wasn't even on my list. You know me and list, right? I keep a lot of lists. Hey, by the way, uh hey Vibes Aquatics in the house. That's cool. Hey Vibes. So uh and you know what? I I, I gave it some thought and I'm gonna change I'm gonna change this. I'm gonna change this little game. The super chat game. Let's change that. Let's make it any super chat, any super chat over ten dollars. So the super chats are fifty percent off. Any super chat over ten dollars in the U.S., I'm gonna send them a Sarah kit. A Sarah, one of these. There's six of them here. You're gonna get one of these Sarah test kits for any super chat over ten dollars, and that that'll cover my shipping. I'm not into making money on these things necessarily. So they're just a giveaway. All right. So 50% off on the super chat. <laughs> uh, that's your super chat game. So, okay. Point, point number two, uh, uh, point number two, right? First one's kind of a bonus. Uh, but anyway, point number two, uh, turnover. Now, Hey, by the way, how's my audio video? Is audio video good? Tell me about the audio video. Does it is it coming through okay? Are you getting are you getting good video and good good picture? Uh, give me a comment in the chat and tell me tell me if you uh, if you're getting good audio and video. One of these days I'll set up a monitor in here. Kathy Gunez in the house. All right, hey Kathy. 
And hey, the Metzikali Fish Keeper has jumped on. So let's see here. AV is good. Thank you, Peas and Haps Forever. Okay, good. Everybody's saying the AV is good. Thank you so much. Thank you for that. Very, very good. Hey, Kent, across the pond. I want to go back across the pond, Kent. I loved, I loved going there. I really did. Got addicted to flat white coffees while I was there. Mountain Greenery, what a great name. Welcome to the uh, welcome to today's live stream, Mountain Greenery. All right, so let's get back back on on topic. So my next point is uh, turnover. Now, depending on the tolerance of your fish for water movement, there are some fish like uh, hill stream loaches. Uh, and there are some fish that um, my experience with clown loaches, loaches in general, they like water, water movement. They, 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 they play in it. They do things like that. Other fish, not so much, right? Your, your, your bettas, your discus, uh, you know, your, your, your broader fish, they don't like to be pushed around. So I would, with those kinds of fish, I would go to the lower end of, of what I'm going to tell you. But with the other fish, you could probably go to the higher end. Also fish that produce a lot of waste, a very highly stocked tank, you want to be on the higher end. And by that, what I'm talking about is, is turnover. Turnover, tank turnover. So for me, I like to turn the water over in a tank between five and ten times an hour. And five times an hour, uh, certainly for a community tank, works great. And Vibes Aquatics, thank you for that. I appreciate that super chat. So around five times an hour. So a 100-gallon aquarium with 500 gallons an hour of turnover. So you throw a couple, you know, 300-gallon an hour canisters on there. Um, maybe you throw... Um, one of those, one of those expert Matic 500 gallon an hour uh, internal filters, uh, you know. It, so there's there's different different ways you can go, but turn that tank over about five times on the community tank, ten times closer to ten times on a um, on a tank that is well stocked, that is fed heavily, and like the, this 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 tank behind me here, the AC tank. Turning that tank over around ten times, uh, maybe more. I've got I've got two two seventeen hundred gallon per hour two seventeen hundred gallon per hour. Uh, she say pumps, and I also have a um, a Fluval FX six rated at about what? What do you think? Once it's filled up with media, maybe five hundred gallons an hour. So what do we got? Three thousand four hundred five. You know we're 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 turning over a lot of a lot of water in that tank. By the way, that tank has that new light on it, that A Best Fish Light. It's by the company A Best Fish Light, and I I love the ability to control the light with the app. And the, the 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 light that was on that tank, the um, Aqualite Aqualite A Q Q A uh, Aqualite, it's called Aqualite Classic, is now on this tank, and I love the way it it's lighting this thing. It's given it sort of a a warmth in the lighting, that combination. So it's very very nice. Hey, Carrie comes in with a super chat. And crosses the ten dollar threshold. Carrie, send me your uh, complete name, mailing address, and you know all the details to Ben. O. Cichlid. I'm going to send you a Sarah quick test kit. Any super chat over ten dollars? A Sarah quick test kit. And please let me know what you think of it once you use it. I'm going to do a I'm going to do a video on it and compare it to the Aquarium Co-op and maybe even to the Tetra strips and just do them side by side and see if they 
if they test out in a similar fashion. But thank you, Carrie. Appreciate that. So turnover. Be sure that you're turning over the water enough, keeping in mind that what the filter company tells you is going to be reduced considerably in some cases based on how much media that you stuff into into the filter and over time that will reduce even further as the impeller becomes gunked up and the media becomes blocked with detritus so your gallons per hour will start to you know curve downward and uh, just something to keep in mind uh, next point, run if you can, and again, size of tank, how much you're stocking, all this sort of stuff plays into it. But if you can, if it fits your budget, run two filters. And I, I like running two filters, and I'll tell you why. I, I do maintenance only on one. I leave the other one alone. And it's just, that's just less disruptive for the aquarium. And that makes me feel a little bit better about the fact that I clean out my media with, um, with tap water. I don't use, ta I don't use tank water to rinse, to rinse my filter media. Now, if you, if you look at primetime aquatics and Jason, uh, Jason Adams over there talks about it, he's got a whole video on it. It he's found, and he's been cleaning sponges for years with tap water has never had an incident. So um, I use two, and they for two reasons. One, one keeps running while I clean the other one. And, and second reason, if one fails, I still have some filtration going. So this tank here has two marine land, two marine land filters in this tank. Tank on the other side, it's over here. This community tank has two expert Maddox's that are being used with only two can uh, two units on them, and I alternate cleaning them. And in the event that one fails, it's fine because the other one is going to provide plenty turnover in the meantime while I can get the other one fixed or replaced. My larger tanks, right, like, like, like the 300, stabilize this. Okay, the larger tanks are, uh, are sump and canister. We have sump and canisters on those larger tanks. So there's a backup going on there, too. All right. So redundancy, backup and redundancy is very, very important. And also some folks will buy two canisters. Someone mentioned they love their Sun Sun canister. I love my Sun Sun canisters too. I have a lot of videos on how to maintain them, an entire playlist on how to maintain them so that you actually get lots of years of use out of them, which includes uh, you know keeping the O-rings uh, working the way they're supposed to and keeping it running quiet, efficient, and, uh, you know, how to stock the trays, you know, what to put in each tray. I have a lot of videos on that. But, uh, you know, I, I love those Sun Suns. They're some of my favorite ones. And I forget where I was even going with that. So some people will buy a backup Sun Sun. This is where I was going with it. Some Because Sun Suns are so affordable, a person will buy a Sun Sun and buy a second Sun Sun and just to cannibalize it so that if anything ever fails in one, they can just go ahead and pull the parts off the other one. And, you know, you'll get 30 years of use if you do it that way, right? Being able to just cannibalize parts. And that's a pretty good, that's a pretty good deal. Vibes Aquatics. I think you, you, you did a, you did a uh, super chat earlier. So that does put you over over the uh, $10 threshold. So, uh, yes, remember, I don't necessarily keep addresses. So please send me complete name and mailing address, and I'm going to get you a Sarah test kit. 
For those of you who just came on, it's one of these guys. These are There's six of them here. I asked my friends over at Sarah that for one, I wanted to test them, and uh, they sent me six. So, and you know me, I love Sarah. 40 years, I think. 40 years they've been doing it? Maybe more? And they have a whole bunch of scientists that work there. Very, very cool. So, uh, yep. You'll be getting one, Vibes. All right, next point. I guess the next point kind of talks to what I just said. Have backup. Have a backup filter sitting on a shelf. Uh, even if it's just an inexpensive hang-on back from China, uh, a, a simple you know, 25 watt internal expert Matic, right? You can pick up for $25. Have these things sitting in the back, you know, sitting in a shelf somewhere. Uh, maybe have the sponge filters sitting hidden in the aquarium behind some decor so that they're growing bacteria. And in the event of a failure of equipment, man, you're up and running immediately. You you pull that spare one out and pop those those the filter media in it, and you're good to go. You've got uh, you know a a perfectly running unit. So backup, backup, and and again, I know this doesn't I know this doesn't fit. The budget for some people, I get it, and sometimes I feel kind of bad about making these suggestions. You know, like 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 someone does a a, a video on on a high end on a high end lighting system that costs about three hundred and fifty dollars. I go, wow, that's great, I love it, but I'm I'm sorry, I'm not going to pay three hundred and fifty dollars for that Kessel uh, light. Uh, I'm I'm just not going to do it. I'm sorry. <laughs> if I had a, a ten thousand dollar coral collection. I would certainly consider it, but uh, not right now. So I feel kind of bad sometimes about some of these suggestions. But work within your budget. Definitely work within your budget. Trenton. Trenton scores a test kit. Now, I'm getting close here. You know, I've only got six of them, and i got to keep one so I can test it. <laughs> what have I given away so far? Like three of them? So I've got like two more, two more that I can give away, and I think that's it. I, I can probably get more of them if I had to. So anyway, just keep that in mind. But yeah, Trent, uh, again, send me your full information and mailing address and everything else to ben.o.cichlid, ben.o.cichlid at gmail.com. All right. So backup, have a backup filter sitting around, uh, preferably have the media hidden somewhere in the aquarium so that you can just fire it up. That'll come in handy too if you need a hospital tank. If you need a hospital tank and, uh, you know, or you want to give a fish a break and you want to pull them out and throw them somewhere, you can just pull that media out of the tank and instant cycle. You're good to go. Use some water from the established aquarium. I'll usually use 50% water from the established aquarium and 50 fresh. So it's like a, so it's like a water change. Treat, you know, treat it, of course, before you, you throw anything in there uh, or you'll kill the beneficial bacteria. Next point. Don't sweat. Don't sweat the media. Don't sweat the media. And let me tell you what I mean by that. Oh my goodness, I wish I could have Biohome, you know, in my, you know, I wish I could have, uh, you know, Matrix and uh, Marine Pure and, okay, look, those are great quality products. I've used them all. They're, they're, they do a great job. Don't sweat it. Don't sweat the media. What what would you consider to be the most pro fish keepers out there? Who who do you consider to be the most pro fish keepers? And and just in general, what class of fish keeper would you consider to be the most pro? I think you'd agree with me if I said, uh, hey Anthony, Anthony Udovich here in Tennessee. Welcome, my friend. Uh I think you'd 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 have to agree that uh breeders. Professional breeders, established professional breeders who are providing fish either directly to the public or to retailers have to be considered at the very top of the professional mountain of fish keepers, right? I mean, they're doing it for a living. If they mess up, they don't eat, right? They, they suffer. They have a, 
a, a, a big potential penalty. <laughs> so, and you look at these guys, you look at these guys and gals that do this, and what do they have in their tanks? What do you see in their tanks? When I went to, uh, when I went to visit James Largo over at the Cichlid Shack, what did I see? Nothing but sponge filters. Everywhere. Sponges everywhere. That's all I saw. So, yes, if you want high-end filter media, I get it. Go for it. Save the money. Put it in there. It's going to do a great job. If you can't afford it, if it's out of your budget, don't sweat it. Buy some, some, some filters, a material from eBay. Cut it to fit and, uh, and go with it. And you'll find that the sponges will do a tremendous job, both with harboring beneficial bacteria and also keeping your tank looking great. I love using uh, egg crate, egg crate sponges because they provide more surface area. Just make sure that the water flow is going into the indentions, into the egg crate. I love using those kinds. I also replace cartridges that are sold by the filter comp and boy, the filter companies don't like me to say this, but I don't buy the cartridges. I just simply buy egg crate sponges and I just cut them so that they're a little bit larger than the insert so they stay nice and tight and I drop them in. And that's what I use. And it saves me money. And I rinse and use again. So uh, it aligns with uh, the Green New Deal. So <laughs> less impact on the environment, less carbon footprint. So. Now, wait a minute. I see another uh, super chat squeeze. Hey, Joe. Joe's getting a kit. Ben Ochart, I'm using a few, sh what, Sharp Pros? Oh, maybe you're saying shark. Maybe shark. It says shark, but I think you mean shark. I'm finding suction is not great. How do the expert matic rate compare to the sharks? Uh, the expert maddocks are a different kind of animal. They have a lot more water juice but they also have a lot more um, a lot more gallons per hour. So the new Shark Pro that I just picked up, which is 35 watts with the clear with the clear enclosures, I think is is a beast. You know, and it comes in at about 35, 40 bucks, maybe 35 bucks. To get something comparable from the Shark Pro, I'd probably have to go with the 900, which is um, $75, $80. That being said, you're going to get a three to five year warranty from, she said, you're not going to get that from Expertmatic. If it fails, probably, you know, maybe even within the first year, but certainly if it fails after the first year, you're going to, you're just going to have to replace it. And I think in the six or seven, expert Maddox that I've had over the years, I think one failed. One of them failed. So they're pretty, they're pretty rock solid. And the new one is really well built, much bit, much bigger impeller and uh, be hard, hard to, uh, it's a lot bigger. I mean, it's a big unit. It's a, you know, it's a big unit. So it's going to be in a, in a fairly tall aquarium, but you can, you can take the, uh, and I think you can do this with the shark pros as, as well. You can, you can only use one section as opposed to using all three sections. You can use just one section. But um, now what's the, you're, you're having, I'm have, finding suction is not great. So you're talking, now, <clears throat> now are you using it, are you using it completely opened up? Do you have it set, you know, at the very top there's a flow there's a flow adjustment here. Let me just get, I have a unit here that I'm preparing to use in another aquarium. Hold on. All right. So if you're, um, 
this is this is the five hundred, right? The the, the nine hundred has three three of these. And and I found that when I took it apart, the sponge was was dirty in only one section, one small section. So it wasn't really like utilizing the entire sponge. Now, in all fairness, this this top unit up here that that monitors the amount of flow was shut down uh, to maybe fifty percent. So I imagine if you open it wide open, and maybe I'll do that as a test. Maybe I'll replace one of the expert Maddox's in the uh, in the community tank with this, and and then open it open it all the way up, and and let's see if it really utilizes the full the full sponge after about a month or two. And so maybe that was so. Just be sure that you have the top opened all the way. And never hold it from the top, especially after you've used it in the aquarium, because the magnet is not strong enough and the bottom falls off and it will, it will crack. Ask me how I know. See where I su su had to super glue it? So it, the magnet is strong, but it's not strong enough to hold this if it's got water. It'll, it'll fall off. And you'll have a broken, you'll have a broken uh, unit, like I have, and you'll have to super glue it. But be sure you're opened up all the way on the top. And the expert Maddox, they have their own, you know. I mean, they 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 tend to use one sponge more than another, but uh, but overall, they do a great job. They do a real good. So price point, you're gonna do better with expert Maddox gallons per hour. You're gonna do better expert Maddox uh, warranty. And wattage, I mean, that unit there, this here, this unit uses, I think, like six watts. Six watts. So let's say I had a power outage. I have a backup that can handle up to 500 watts. Uh, so the, the all powers, I did a video on it, all powers backup unit, and it can handle a 500 watt load. So if I have one of these for each tank, Six six watts. I could run them for probably six hours on that on that unit on that all powers unit. So that would handle most blackouts, right? Most power outages. So six watts. I mean, six watts is nothing. All right. So I hope that answered your question, Joe. And yes, you do get you do get some test strips. So again, send me your address and all that good stuff to the uh, to my email. You've got my email. All right, so where was I? Don't sweat the media. If you got to go all sponges, if you got to go lava rock, if you got to go go to the garden shop and buy some plain white pumice, which is just like Matrix, uh, Seacam Matrix, but don't tell anybody I told you that. And uh, you can get away with some real bargain media if, if, if you want to. Now, uh, maintenance. Here's my final my final point on on how to uh, on how to filter like a pro. Such an arrogant statement. I don't consider myself a pro, but uh, I thought it was a good title for the for the <laughs> for the stream. <laughs> I hate arrogant people that say my way is the only way in fish keeping. To me, or are, are, uh, they're just too full of themselves. Everything I tell you, you take with a grain of salt and you compare it to other ideas out there and do your own research, make up your own mind, and uh, never take what I say as the end all because uh, everybody's situation is different. But the last point is in, in uh, filtering like a pro is dial it in. And by dial it in, what I mean is find the sweet spot that works best with your filter. I recently did a video on dialing in the the FX6 and I've I've arrived at a 9 month sweet spot for that FX6 now that's for me for you it might be 3 months it might be a year it might be 1 month so dial it in by evaluating 
you know, and, and keeping a record, whether it's on the notes on your phone, a dry erase board like I have on the wall of my, of my fish room, uh, and, you know, just, just jot it down somewhere. Maybe even have a little post-it on the side of your tank and really kind of keep track of how, how long and the last date that you worked on the filter and find that sweet spot and then always go back. Now, now hang on back filters. They'll tell you, they'll tell you when they need to be uh, cleaned up because they'll either have something pop up or you'll see the overflow channels, right? The overflow channels will start to flow water, which means the water's not going through the filter media. So they'll tell you when they need to be uh, need to be worked on. Your expert Maddox, uh, you you can see on the side when they're gunked up, and you also have a reduction in in flow. Now, by the way, I forgot to mention one of the things on expert Maddox too, and you can alleviate this by closing off the venturi, but they will create a lot of micro bubbles. You see here. Let me let me adjust this. Hold on. You see all those micro bubbles? Now, if I shut the Venturi off, that's going to go ahead and uh, and stop that. As it is, I have the the outputs pointed towards the back wall because I don't want the tank to look like a snow globe. Now, because I don't have, and because the flaps, the flaps on these expert Maddox tend to fail. Once they get gunked up and older, they don't really hold their position. And so I was pointing the, the, the output up to the surface and breaking up the surface and creating oxygen in the tank. It's, it's, but because those flaps fail and eventually just end up going straight, I'm not breaking up the surface. And so I need some surface breakup, and so I'm letting it create the bubbles. Now, on the new unit, the 35-watt unit, that unit is staying in place, and it is breaking up the surface, the newer Expertmatic. All right, so let's see here. Now, same thing with a canister filter. A canister filter, you can tell, especially if you have the outputs pointed towards the surface, you can tell when the pressure goes down a little bit. And that's your first clue that you got to break it open. But after you've broken it open a few times, you'll start to get a feel like, okay, that was a little bit too early. That canister was too clean. First time I opened up that FX6, I put a video on it, uh, and I think the video was, I was shocked. I was shocked at what I found. The FX6 after six months looked really, really good. So I decided to go longer. But it'll, it'll tell you. It'll, it'll tell you what, uh, uh, you know, you can dial it in and come up with a time period and then keep a written record of how long that was. Keeping in mind that if you add fish and a fish put on size and you feed them more, you're going to have to shorten that window because you're creating a, gr a greater bio load, right? You're creating more waste in the aquarium. So your window is going to be getting shorter as the fish become larger and you start feeding more or you add fish. And it goes in reverse too. You thin out, you know, some fish die off, things like that. You're going to, uh, you're going to also have a reduction in, uh, you're going to have a reduction in what you need to do. In, in in how often you need to actually actually do service. So uh, let's go ahead and uh, rough justice beer bubbles for me. <laughs> Brian Park bubbles look cool. Some people love bubbles and bubblers in their tank, right? I mean, there's a reason why they sell those long bubbler strips and big discs, and you can get all kinds of bubblers. And uh, some people don't. Some people don't like bubbles. Other, you don't see bubbles in nature, blah, blah. I'm like, I've gotten to a point now where, you know what, it's, you like what you like, and, and that's okay. If you want to put a, if you want to put a SpongeBob in your aquarium, 
I don't care. That it's all, that awesome. If you get a thrill out of that, if you bring your five year old to the aquarium and they become excited because they see a, a you know, SpongeBob's, you know, they see a, a pineapple house or something. More power to you, you know. I think it's cool. So, uh, at any rate, let's let's look at uh, a video that I put together for you today, and you tell me what you think. It's going to be released as a video either tonight or tomorrow, so you folks are getting a uh, a first look at what's going to be a video tonight or tomorrow. That doesn't mean that you shouldn't stop by and take a look at it anyway. Because <laughs> then I'll kill the views on the other video. <laughs> you see how greedy I am? So um, let me go ahead and just play this for you. And it's going to have the feel of a regular video because it is. And if anybody gets on the chat while it's playing and says, Hey, wait a minute. I thought this was a live stream. Please tell them that I'll be back that we're just playing a video. <laughs> here you go, I hope you enjoy it. Hello friends, Ben Ochart here. It's been kind of exciting here in the fish room. You know, these uh, fish room updates are just impromptu. I just, just sort of decide, you know what, I think I'll do an update. So they're not scripted. I don't really give much thought ahead of time. I just decide to give you just a raw look at what it is that's going on in the day-to-day uh, -day life of running this fish room. So. Uh, let me go ahead and share with you some of the stuff that's been going on. I think you'll find it kind of interesting and uh, maybe surprising. But let's go ahead and jump right into it. Well, I'm happy to say that this tank has been business as usual. It's been uh, real smooth. Everybody's getting along, relatively speaking, as well as you'd expect these types of fish to get along. And uh, this tank is doing well, nice and stable. My plecos are coming along nicely over there in the little uh, pleco playground. My uh, autopharynx tetrastigma continues to be a, uh, a one-eyed jack here. Let me go ahead and give you a little more light His right eye is still uh, covered over. He's getting uh, big water changes on a regular basis and coming along a little bit at a time. This filter that I just installed, the new Expert Matic, is working perfectly, doing a great job, and looks so much better than the white, than the white Expert Matics. But the tank is looking good. The two silver dollars on this side are probably going to get moved out when I get some more African cichlids. I'm going to have to uh, quarantine them probably on this side. And the uh, silver dollars, I might put them in the community tank. They're pretty small. I don't think they'll harass the community fish too much. But uh, I'll leave the tank divided. And uh, there you go. You can see uh, up just for a second there, you can see his bad eye. I think he's pretty much lost that eye. I'm not expecting to, to, uh, to actually see him be able to see out of it. I'm gonna be doing a, uh, a review of some of these uh, Sarah strips. I asked my friend Klaus over at, at Sarah about them and uh, I thought he'd send me a box. He sent me six boxes, so <laughs> I'll probably give some of these away in a live stream. So uh, stay tuned for that. These are test strips by Sarah. Uh, we'll do a comparison against uh, maybe the Aquarium Co-op. Uh, co I'm getting ready here for the Saturday live stream. I'm gonna be shooting from this angle so you'll have the, the 90 gallon in the background here. The 90 gallon, I've, I've got a different, a different light on it and I really like, I like the warmth of it. It goes really well with the decor and the fish. This is a light that was on the 300, but I took it off the 300 to put on that, a best fish light that I just did a review on. I'll include a, uh, a link to that video. But I really like the way this, this light 
is lighting up this 90 gallon. This is a, uh, oh, it's too bright, I can't read it. I think it's an aqua. I think it's an aqua, which is, aqua is a, uh, just a, uh, a high-end Hyger. So, <clears throat> love the way it, uh, just the, the tone of the, the actual tone of the tank, it's great. Little gold spotted Severum, not sure what I'll do with him. I think I'll put him in the 90 and uh, see how he does. If he can't hang with them, I don't know, maybe I'll, maybe I'll uh, end up giving him away. I'm gonna be releasing a video on another, another light by the same company, a Best Fish, and it's this light back here, which is both a light and a bubbler. It's a submersible light. And uh, unlike the Best Fish, review. This review isn't going to be that that positive. I think I gave the light like three stars, but you can see it's uh, doesn't really provide the kind of lighting I'd like to see. It does give the fish kind of a pretty sheen to be lit from behind like that, but I like my tanks a little brighter than that. I had to pull out one of the uh, one of the liar tails. The other two had a little bit of white on their tails and then ended up dying and then this one started to get some white on the tail and at first I didn't know I thought maybe these liar tails had some white on the tail I'm just very these liar tail mollies I'm not that familiar with them but I put this guy in the in this tank and I put I put some of this Marison this uh, Fritz Marison in there and uh, man he immediately got better his tail cleared up, some uh, nice yellow orangey color showed up on the tail, which wasn't there before. And my only regret is I wish I'd put the other, the other two liar tails in here you know, immediately instead of wondering what was going on or not really being sure of what was happening. But he looks like he's made a complete recovery. He's in his fifth day of treatment, so he'll get a water change uh, tomorrow and then I'll watch him for a few days and put him back in into this little live bear tank. This little 20 gallon tall here. Unlike the um, Auto Fairness Tetra Stigma that did not like that Marison at all. He immediately went into sort of a shock on it. Better tank is doing great. Just love the colors on that Nemo Galaxy. It's called a Nemo Galaxy. Picked him up from KG Tropicals. And of course, I got this guy that I got at a local fish store, a mustard gas, Mr. Mustard the second. Those little uh, Shise pumps are doing great. That's the Shise, I think it's the micro. I know there's a micro and a nano. It's the bigger of the two. Boy, the blue on this guy is crazy. But if we, I got the box back here actually. It's, um, I'll tell you exactly the name of that filter. I put a, I put a video out on, on it. And it is the Micron, the Mi Mi Nano, or it's the Micron, she say Micron. And they have one that's a smaller one called the Nano, but this one's the Micron. The box is the same, so you put an arrow to indicate which one it is in the box. And in this case, it's the Micron. So I've got two of them in there at the lowest settings. So you can see they're not really pushing that plant around. They're not creating a lot of water movement, which I don't want a lot of water movement with Beta. So it's working out perfectly. And you can see the condition of the aquarium. It's excellent. Now, I had to get that old Hyger. You remember that old Hyger aquarium that, that I formerly retired? Well, here it is. And what's going on there? I've got a uh, Johnson Eye in there. The Johnson Eye from the 300 gallon is in this, in this Hyger tank. Because for some reason, I don't know why, he's hiding underneath the little shelf there. One thing I don't like about this tank is it provides fish a way to be completely out of view, which I guess it's good if the fish wants a break, but 
I can't really keep tabs on how he's doing, but I just put him in here for a minute just so he'd have a break, catch his breath, because for some reason, I don't know why, all of a sudden the, uh, let me see if I can find him. The Buchochromis Rhodesia yellow, this guy right here, for some reason he got up, you know, he got really interested in him. Let me bring the lighting a little closer. There we go. So, for some reason the Rhodesia yellow got really interested in the Johnson eye and just started to, to follow him around. Now it's one thing when a fish chases one fish, then chases another fish, and then kind of swims off and loses interest, and then goes and chases another fish, and then another fish. That's not what was going on. This Rhodesia yellow was just on that Johnson eye over and over and over again. So I figured, okay, you know what, I gotta pull him out or he's gonna end up really, really hurting him. So, uh, so there he is in this tank here. You can see him poking his nose out. Not sure if you can make him out. Ah, of course, he pulls right back in the second I come over, but. So I've got two, two hosp three, three hospital and retreat tanks. Boy, look at the colors on that Bicolor 500. How crazy is that? These colors are popping. This is that new light. This is that new, a best fish light that I talked about in a recent video. And it looks like it's only on white right now. I'm gonna tone it down a little bit, but it's pretty bright right now. But it's uh, really lighting up the aquarium well. I've got the app and I can use the app to kind of change the colors on it. The problem is that I have it on a timer and when the timer cuts off power to it, it like it goes back to being unprogrammed. So what I've got to do is I've got to uh, run it on its own on its own circuit. I can I can set up eight different times for it to turn on and off. So I don't need to have it on a timer. So I'm going to take it off of the strip that has the timer and just put it into its own plug, and then and then uh, program sunrise and sunsets a couple times a day. I noticed this uh, Red Tiger Oscar suddenly just made a really big jump in size. He's noticeably bigger than, than the albino Red Tiger, which I mean, they both arrived at the exact same time and they both look very similar. But the Red Tiger is just really bulking up really fast. He's already as big as the, uh, as the chocolate. He was noticeably smaller than the chocolate when I first got him. Is that beautiful Nicaragua? Yeah, how's hiding in the back? There's the Salvini. Come on, Salvini, show yourself, buddy. Beautiful fish, one of my favorite fish. But nobody interacts with me in this tank now more than these guys. These guys, would you know, I can hand feed them and they would be fine. So you know that I put my hand up here, people see they think I'm gonna be feeding them so they come out. That fire mouth, the fire mouth was getting harassed by the Nicaragua at first, but Nicaragua seems to have lost interest. That vieja is just a beast. So that's the fish room update. And if you have any comments, tips, ideas, share them below. I'm definitely gonna, gonna be getting some uh, different lighting for that 20 tall. Don't like that background lighting. It's a little bit too dark for my taste. You'll see the review on it. I think I, I, think I gave it about three stars. So um, unlike the one, the, the uh, a Best Fish LED strip, I gave that I think four, four and a half. And I told them how to become a five star light. So uh, yeah, share your thoughts below. And I hope to see you on Saturday at the Cichlids and Coffee live stream. Be sure to give the video a thumbs up if you like it. And uh, you know, subscribe, hit the notification bell. We're creeping up, we're creeping up to 50,000, and it's getting exciting. And I hope I can hit it by the end of the year. It looks really tight. Don't know if we can, but we'll get, we'll give it a shot. So uh, I'll see you again soon. Thank you for tuning in. Bye bye. There you go. <clears throat> a first peek 
at an upcoming video. Hope, <laughs> excuse me. I hope you enjoyed that. And, uh, and I want to thank everybody who joined me today here on the live stream in particular, those of you who, uh, who participated in today's Sarah game, be sure to send me your uh, complete mailing address and I'll get that Sarah test strip kit out to you ASAP. And uh, we're pretty much coming up right on the hour. Let's see here if there are any questions you want me to pick up immediately before we end off. If you have any questions, throw them at me now. Otherwise, we're going to go ahead and wrap this thing up. Q and A. It is the Q and A period. Going once, going twice. All right. So watch for that video posting really soon, and maybe tonight or tomorrow. And thanks for a wonderful video today. You are welcome, Trent W. And you have a good weekend as well. It's getting cold here, and uh, I think we might even get some snow. So it should be very interesting. I might have to whip out my uh, my floor heater. I've got a thousand watt. I think it's called Doctor Heat. Doctor Heater, I think it's called, and it's a thousand watt unit, and it sits right in the middle of all the tanks. It keeps it nice and comfortable in here, and uh, so we'll go ahead and uh, get that thing fired up as well. So at any rate, thank you everybody. You are the best. Enjoy your weekends. You rock, my friends, and. Uh, I should be getting those new fish this coming week. I'm going to uh, talk to James about it and ensure that we get them here because uh, it is going to start getting really cold, and I hate shipping uh, fish when it gets too cold. Thank you to my wonderful moderators. Thank you, Cichlid Shack, for all the help. Thank you, Aquarium Co-op, and uh, thank you to you watching the stream. You're the best. Thank you to my subscribers and my wonderful moderators. All right, I will see you folks uh, next week, same time same channel and uh i guess that's it for now thank you my friends bye bye